Today we're going to be fishing soft plastics, in this case a rather, oh it's a bit of a bashed up uh, motor oil, had quite a few chunks taken out of it already, it's a bit windier than we wanted, so we're going to talk about how we go and cope with some wind and modest depths, normally in this sort of a depth which is around 15, 15 meters, 17 meters, I'd be after about a 3 8 of an ounce because the longer you have sinking down through the water column the longer the fish have to go and see it, move into position then come and grab it. However because of the wind and the fact that it puts a big bow on our line we want to go and have a slightly heavier weight to keep that line a little bit tighter because it's going to provide a slightly bigger anchor for us and it means that we can still detect our bites uh, reasonably well. Today we're using the Mega Wave. It's a longer than usual rod, it's eight and a half feet. I've loaded it up with some um, with some nine line, which is a it's been proving to be a very very good uh, line. It's uh, casts well, handles well, nice and durable, and it's called nine line for a good reason. It's got nine strands going through it there to make it a nice round profile, which means it cuts through the wind and the water really nicely. I've got 15 pound on at the moment, and it definitely tests well over that, so you, you can really trust it. No, it's not going to go and snap. I will go and put some secret sauce in here. As I say, this, uh, the old uh, motor was getting pretty ma pretty naked. Now how we do this, just for those of you who haven't seen before, we keep this finger on the side of the stem, finger raised off the foregrip, okay, and it just means that when we cast, we can um, get a good decent, uh, it'll actually just automatically release. And you'll also see what I do when just before it hits the water. So just before it happens, I go and hold, I, I actually trap the line and push it down. And you can see what happens when I do it. So I'm going to cast out with the wind a bit. And just before it hits, see how I pull that line down there? I've trapped it on the spool, pulled it down. It accelerates the line into the water, uh, sorry, the lure into the water. Also means that the line is pushed down onto the water. And I've kept my rod down as well. So that the, um, so that that's also trapping the line on the surface it just means that the line isn't blowing around creating a bow and by having some direct uh, line right from the beginning rather than a great big bow you can actually see what's happening uh, much more effectively because when the lure gets eaten the line jerks in, in re reaction to that and I'm watching this all the way down it's probably getting a little bit uh, deep out here now oh, oh. it's getting a little bit deep what I'm doing is I'm watching down along the line and a lot of the fish have actually been biting on the way down. They've also been uh, taking what I've been dragging. Now we've got our line nicely trapped in the water there. We're keeping that bow to a, to a minimum. But if we're in any doubt as to where it is, just a little bit of a wind will go and tell you whether or not you actually do have some slack line out. We're also keeping our Rod tip very low to the water once again, just to go and minimise the amount of oh, minimise the amount of um, line blowing around. Oh, and already we're ha we're having a bit of interest on the way down. In fact, uh, this morning what we're finding is a lot of the fish are taking on the way down, and so we're having to be very vigilant as it uh, goes down through the water column. It's about 15 metres here, as I said, and um, we're finding that these are quite active fish, so possibly they're actually feeding on, they, they could actually be a few um, feeding on bait fish. And now we've just got a little bit of a drag going on, just to see if, any, if that's going to work instead. We didn't get nothing on the way down, even though we had a couple of bites. They look like pretty small fish, to be honest. Uh, although very often, the fish that take on the way down can be big predators and um, they tend to be usually the, be the, the best fish of the day. So it's always worth getting those ones. Okay, so we haven't got nothing that way, so we're going to have another quick cast. We're in a prime place now. We, what we try to do is go a bit with the wind at least, but also have a bit of an angle uh, with the current so that uh, it's able to just, first of all, get down. And secondly, just give something of interest in its retrieve. So we've got the line trapped once again on the water's surface. I'm watching that line the whole way down. I'm pointing the rod along it as well. Every time we move that lure, we always return back to the position that it was before so that it stays as direct as possible. 
so at the moment anytime you want to see what's happening like just then I didn't know whether I had a uh, tight line to the lure and, and I wound it and sure enough there was quite a bit of slack in it might have had a bite then oh might have had a bite then if you're in any doubt a wind is what you do because what that does is it commits the fish to hanging on to it better because it actually thinks that um, a fish is trying to get out of its mouth it's grabbed it grabbed your lure it thinks it's trying to get away or um, if it's let go it um, sees it zipping away and it comes up and grabs it again oh. Oh, boy, it's not very big I think so now we're just um, doing the sort of drag thing just behind the boat this is what I do at the at the end like the um, the cast and retrieves have been a failure but you never know what's going to work and when it comes to this point when you're just dragging along you, you don't want to actually move it too much I'm, I'm getting quite small fish biting I think but that in itself is quite often worthwhile still doing because the big ones they actually detect the other the smaller fish having a bit of a um, bit of activity and they very often will come up and grab it so it uh, doesn't matter if you're getting little bites sometimes you'll get um, big fish mixed in with the um, uh, mixed in with the activity but no we'll actually um, go and have another cast time to uh, resource it's usually what I do is I go and check here and if there's any of the secret sauce left I don't bother but um, as you can see it's been actually bitten out by the fish so it's time to go and put a new light in a little bit left inside which is good I'm just making sure my whoops see it's come out the side you don't want to have that and you don't really want to have that either see how there's a dimple in the side it means I've actually somehow collected a little bit of the rubber uh, going through so I might actually just go and do that again just to make sure it's as good as possible the whole thing about soft baiting is that you really want to make this soft bait as well presented as possible and that means making sure it's nice and straight on the hook so I've gone through the middle there I've threaded up right up against the head got that sticking out the slit a lot of people leave it out there that's wrong it only gives you one point of contact you want to go back in there push that through okay now I've, I've actually gone a bit see how it's like a bit of a banana that's that's no good so great thing about our product is that we can just go and re reposition until we're happy with it until it's nice and straight okay so now that's pretty good might even just do it slightly better again okay but sauce yeah. quite a professional still don't really <laughs> still don't like it. I still don't really like it yeah no I don't like it now I've filled it up with this so it's not ideal we're going to chuck it out anyway because um, we're going to go and have a challenge so once again finger raised cast out down to go and trap it fire it into the water quicker let a little bit out because like we know it's 15 to 20 meters oh, it's, yeah it's 16.8 so that's going to take a little while to, uh, to sink down so we're going to hold our rod along the line watching it all the way down winding if we want to know where the uh, where the lure is and making sure it's tight coiled spring ready to go off oh 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 on the way down those are the ones we're waiting for damn it's getting down to the bottom for choking Paul's been whinging at me I've been sticking with the motor oil because um, it's been a good one and I did hook a, a pretty big fish but he's going on and on and on I've just caught the last four fish you've only caught two so 
This is what he's been doing well with, the old smoky shad. It's actually also the favourite of John Sutherland and um, up in Northland there. So he has been getting some good bites, so I've put it on to go and shut him up and we'll go and cast out and see how that happens. See how that one now works. I can't believe that you were right mate, like... I'm always right mate. It was like, unfortunately, about half a minute. And yeah, the old smoky shad did the job. It's not even too bad. Nice little fatty. So yeah, mate, I have to bow to your good luck in that case. You uh, did come up with a good colour. It's got me my first legal fish for the day. So thank you, buddy. And, can you hold uh, it up so we can see it? Yeah. Smoky oh, yeah. shed. Little fatty. So tell us the story of what's just happened, mate. Mm. Well, Paul, didn't I? Haven't I already said it before? No. Just so everyone knows what. Well, just yeah. Happened. Well, you know, Paul doesn't often do that well. And um, so when he started catching more than me, you know, there's something just like the whole world went upside down. And um, he said, mate, you have to go and change. Like, there's no point in being stubborn. It was just like speaking to my wife, to be honest. And I, had, I went, my head dropped and I went, maybe I will. Especially as you're my boss and you're telling me what to do out on the sea. Um, so I put it on and yeah, it was maybe half a minute before I got my first fish of the morning. So thanks, Paul. <laughs> Wait, no, unless we try. As I say, I wasn't wasn't necessarily more advice. I actually suggested the same thing in the preamble. Oh, I thought it was your idea. Yeah. So you just picked up size. on it, so and then you tried to get the glory. Oh. I think you're taking my advice two times in a row, mate. Makes sense to me. Shouldn't you use scissors for that? Yep, because that's why my teeth are falling to bits. Right. a slug. What I find if you put too much on it just splashes off when it hits the water so no point in putting too much on. Uh, well unfortunately the um, as we often say blind worm a uh, blind bird does find the worm sometimes. Paul came up with a couple of ideas um, and uh, yeah unfortunately they've uh, worked pretty well. I've had to go and bite the humble bullet. Got another, another little fatty for um for the chili bin. Go and make some nice fritters out of that later on. Go to the smoky shed. Who would who'd think that such a pretty innocuous looking lure could be so good sometimes and it certainly can be I guess it looks a little bit like a, a piper we saw some piper today eh mate maybe yeah we did see some piper we did see a maybe piper maybe that's got something to do with it yeah yeah we saw something big chasing it in the shallows so I was chasing all the piper in the shallows so okay shall I have another cast yeah mate yeah, now that we're starting to get the formula right, it's all about just working out what's working at the time. Uh, try one more. Go to the Smoky Shad. Thanks, John. John Sutherland, our hard-working rep in the far north there. Oh, it might be the wrong way. Okay. Cast with the winds, trap it, hold the line down near the surface, let a little bit of uh, slack line out because I know it's 20 metres deep here, just helps it to fall naturally to start with. Just respond, oh, with it. I was just going to say, respond to any bites with um, just a jiggle and a whine, and uh, it happened right on cue. It's not a monster, but it's one that will probably be good for tonight on the plate. 
Now, one of the major things about the Z-Man, apart from being super tough, is simply that it's buoyant. And what that means is that when it's on the bottom or when um, it's got it raising up like that and just wafting around when it's also drifting downwards, it's actually slowing that descent. So we've kind of got a balance between the lead, which is heavy, and the buoyancy of the tail. And just the fact that the seven inch has got a bit more weight to it means that we can cast a long way. It's going to have quite a lot of inherent buoyancy on the way down. So it does mean that we've got um, the capabilities to cover more territory and for it to then take longer drifting downwards so that they can see it and respond to it and um, be in a better position to bite it on the way down or attack it on the way back and that's, that's how I got the last fish. Well it's been typical uh, winter fishing today. We've uh, had to stick out a little bit. In fact um, generally we just wait until Paul goes that's enough, I've had enough, let's go. And then he'll hook up or I'll hook up. And um, as a result, we've had to work for our fish. But uh, there's been some pretty decent ones. And I've got one on right now. Oh, that's, that's not a bad fish, mate. We're currently fishing in about uh, nine, 10 meters of water. Are going to keep this bait? Yeah. Okay. This, this, sort of, this is the sort of size that I think, shall I, shan't I? It has to have a good home. If it doesn't, then I'm going to let it go. Oh, he spat out squid. Just what? spat out squid. Did it? Yeah. How would you try squidding here, mate? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, we'll have to net that. It's just too close in its mouth. I, was usually, I like to go and lift my fish out by the uh, jig head if I can. It's uh, a lot. It's a lot uh, less hassle. Oh yeah. Well, go and show them what's underneath. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. So yeah, that's a pretty good reward for um, the probably, we've probably actually been fishing for about, uh, I'd say an hour and a half. We've got about uh, probably 10 fish in the bin, but that's definitely our biggest of the day. It's probably about, um, probably about five and a half pound, I'd say, maybe six. But uh, yeah, that's a good little eater. And the old smoky shad did it again. Good on you, mate. We'll keep it. Oh, well, that was a pretty fun day. Mate, I like that. It start, was cool. Yeah, start, start off with a bit of squid fishing. But we soon realised it was a bit windy and they weren't biting in the daytime, so we weren't going to push it too far. Not this time anyway. So I decided to go snapper fishing. Came home with certainly got a good feed. Mm. Um, fished around Mary Rock. Uh, I did a bit of filming. Mark did a bit of fishing. And I think what we both learnt today is how important it is to change the colours mm. of your soft baits, mate. Well, unfortunately, Paul, like, you know, like, I can see that, you know, you've made this the uh, main subject because you're gloating a bit. Um, well, it's not so much about gloating, it's more about, like, what I see, and I do it myself, yeah, and I yeah. saw you do it, mm. is when you're not getting, catching fish, and you can't be bothered changing your colour of your software. Well, to be fair, mm. I did have my chances, but they just didn't translate. Yeah. And Especially, I was using motor oil, and Paul's using smoky shad. And you know why I was here. using smoky shad? Because I just had a, a whole pile of soft baits. I just pulled it out, said, "Oh, I'll try mm -hmm. give, give this one a go." Mm. Well, you fluked it. I fluked you, it. You fluked it, and uh, you did say that uh, it was doing well for you. And I have to admit, after three or four in a row, I just went, "He does have a point." Even though I just lost one real <laughs> big one on motor oil, so I had to bite the bullet. Say, Paul. You don't I'll like go, being told what to do, do nah, you? Mate? Uh, not by you. No, not by me. No, no. Not by you. Um, uh, in fact, if I say put on, why don't you put try that one? You go, nah, mate. Well, I did. Say, in fact, what I said is, I'm going to go and put on Atomic Sunrise. Yeah, that's and, right. <laughs> and you go, oh, that's a good idea. That really looks like Smoky Shad. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went, ah, oh, okay. Well, I'll go and put that on. 
and I did the first cast, it was on the way down and straight away it's Bang. being hit. Straight away. And uh, unfortunately that proved to be pretty much the story for the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. It really turned things around. It did mate. And um, we went from struggling to Having like, a good day. nailing it really and, um, in, in very short order. Yeah. In fact um, we, I, I thought we might have had our limit so we were letting stuff go and sure enough we were uh, yeah. 13 fish so yep. it was pretty yep. close. Yep. And uh, if we'd stayed where we were, because like Paul cannot help himself. He sees a few gannets, and the whole reason for going in the North Channel was that we would be in the lee of the land. He goes, "Let's go over there," yeah. and so we go on Mate, the gannets. I'm off on every the time southern I, side. Every time I see a gannet dive in, well, I'm there. We're getting uh, a nice chop, yeah, and in my little boat. I know you're whining a bit about going too far, <laughs> and might get a bit windy. <laughs> And no, because I'm the only one getting all wet. Get home in time to watch Coronation <laughs> Street. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just one after another. I think like five in a row yeah. uh, on the end there, and we just went, oh, well, that's enough. Like, let's not, let's not uh, damage too many more. Mm. Up to about six pound, probably. So not huge, but good fat fish. I, th I think only about two or three over the whole time. Yeah, we've been under yeah, it was a good size. day, mate. It's a good day. So, and we were concentrating on about uh, ten to twenty meters, twenty-three meters. Yeah. And so that sort of depth, if you guys are looking for it. Um, yeah. And also that seven inch just was smashing them. Everyone yeah. talks about um, uh, going small over the uh, over the winter, but I find seven inch is still just yeah. Perfect. Seven inch soft baits seem to be the go at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. see you later. Okay. See you.